Hello everyone on YouTube. Today's video will be about me showing off a... well not showing off. It'll be showing where I did some repair work for another co-worker. His name is Kevin. His, he wound up spilling several liquids in his laptop. Well, not several, but might as well say several because of how much wound up in it. Um, in the end, what had went wrong was his mouse, not his mouse, his keyboard as well as his motherboard were damaged. Uh, um, normally on these kind of repairs, what I do is I fully disassemble the laptop. I uh, look for any damages, see what does, doesn't work. Uh, I mainly do this disassembly first to make sure that there is nothing that will short circuit if I boot it up, and then I reassemble it and run it and see what all is broken. Um, so, in the end, what was wrong was his keyboard was pretty much destroyed. Whatever liquid got into the membrane on the keyboard just made it where it wouldn't work anymore. So, half the keys did not work. Uh, also, whenever I scrubbed the motherboard clean, come to find out, well, not scrub, but cleaned it of all the liquid that was on it. Uh, it wound up somehow damaging the traces that were on the motherboard. From what I could tell, the liquid that wound up spilled in it, when it got turned on, eventually just created a, damaged the traces around the memory area. This uh, particular model of laptop has soldered in memory, as well as a slot for add-on memory. Um, and the soldered on memory was damaged and because it was soldered there was no way to replace it or just remove it and bypass it entirely with the larger stick of memory for the secondary slot because there was only one slot on there um so yeah I hope you all enjoyed today's video I am sorry if this section looks dark I am using it recording Femora which I am back to using because the Venture Resolve acts a little wonky on my computer as soon as I fix that, I'll be going back to using DaVinci Resolve. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Please press like and subscribe and share my videos. And I'll... Oh, I will also put the prices of all parts at near the end of the video. So, I'll see you all in a bit. Here's your new stick of RAM. Wait. Ignore the messiness of the bed. Wait. Uh, when I pulled this out... It literally ripped the CPU out of the socket, tested it, it works still. This is a known issue with the style of sockets and the thermal paste that you use from the factory. It pretty much, pretty much acts like glue after a while and will rip it out. That is the reason I did not use Arctic Silver on this again. Well, not again. Why well, I did not use Arctic Silver at all. I used my Arctic MX-2 thermal paste on it. It will allow it to cool more efficiently, just as good as Arctic Silver, it has a lifespan of 8 years inside a computer, and I'm, the good news is if I ever gotta clean this up for you again, all I have to do is remove the fan, clean the grill, put the fan back in, I do not have to remove this, so I went ahead and went with the theoretical 8 year paste. This is your motherboard right here. It's once again tiny, but it's fully functional. Uh, your CPU, I looked at the numbers on it, it said 2.3 GHz, so yes, it is a 2.3 GHz processor. This uses a special plate that expands over here and here. It plugs in right here, so the fact it works, well, it works, that's all that matters. Um, that's the plug-in for your fan, I've got to hook these back up. These are your antenna for your wireless card. Let's see, and your battery looks in good shape. I went ahead and cleaned up your computer as a courtesy service because you always give me work when I need it for the extra money. When you pay me, it's actually going to allow me to buy, put a down payment on a new set of hard drives for my server. So I do thank you for that. Please ignore Linus in the background. Uh... But yeah, after I'm done, I'm going to run stress tests on this. I'm also going to try to install Defraggler on here to defragment Windows. 
Uh, on a side note, here's your old keyboard. It was a complete pain in the ass to pull out. As you can see, it's really shot. And there's just no repair in this kind of keyboard, at least for me. Because I would have to literally rip this plastic out of here. And then pull each key and then try and find a way to remove the membrane without damaging it. It just, it's not worth it. It's a good thing I went ahead and told you to go ahead and buy a new keyboard. But there's an issue, and I hope you don't mind. You can see a difference. This has tiny keys. This has B keys. So, uh, yeah. I hope you don't mind the difference. But this was the cheapest but best one I could find that would work for you. Um, if you want, after you get it back, I, you can give it back to me. I'll try to RMA this and see if I can get a different one. But, I went ahead and compared the ribbon cables. Oi, better turn it down this way. The ribbon cables are a perfect match. Part numbers are a perfect match. So... Oh, yeah. But yeah, went ahead and cleaned up the inside. I'm gonna re wipe it down after I finish getting everything installed. I cannot fix this button just because of how it's built in. To fix this, you'd have to replace, from what I can tell, this top panel. Considering you eventually plan on upgrading, I don't suggest doing that just because I'd have to find one and then it depends on the pricing. But yeah, that's the. Work so far done on your Asus laptop. On a side note, it's weird. I had to pull most screws, and this is a panel. So, Asus could have done a better design on that. But it does make it very easy where I can work on your computer. So, I'm going to get back to work on this and hopefully finish it up, considering how much you're paying me. I want to get it done now that i got the parts in, well, the proper part. And the one that came in proper the first time. See you later. Also, on a side note, uh, this fan's also a similar design to the last laptop I worked on for a uh, friend network, the customer known as Dennis. Still don't know how to say his last name, so I'm not going to butcher it again. But, uh, good news is that was wide enough for me to fit my two, the toothbrush I use for cleaning in there to get all the dust out. Can air will work, but sometimes it needs to really throw scrubbing where can air just can't get it out due to anything from nicotine to, well, anything that makes it sticky. So, fan's nice and clean. It's going to run nice and beautiful after it's done. Uh, I'll try to get pictures of the new thermals, considering how the last pictures on, a, on the HP laptop came out. And I've already got two dislikes on that video, so yeah. <clears throat> See, this is weird. This is the part that goes here. It just uses what looks like a 10 pin connector, really tiny 10 pin connector. Uh, about to put the fan in. But yeah, I'll keep you all posted. As you can see here, I have a laptop. Yeah. Laptop laid apart in pieces. This belongs to another co worker. His name is Kevin. I will not say anything beyond that because I haven't gotten his permission yet. Um, he spilled milk in this and I cleaned it up, got it all back together, cleaned it best I could, and uh, it kept airing out. And when I took it back apart again to figure out what was going on, the blue screen depth kept pointing at the RAM chips. This board is designed with a slot here for a second stick, but it has basically a whole 2 gigabyte stick soldered in here. As a result, uh, I decided to take a closer look, and, well, I can't show you on that camera just because I don't have an LCD screen to see what I'm looking at on the back of the camera. But, uh, it's got several burn marks along the lanes, and it looks like one of the chips is damaged. Uh, from what I can tell, that's just what happened. 
I have a replacement from the company that built the laptop. It's what they had in their stock. And as far as I can tell, and yes, these are. These are the same exact uh, boards almost. The only difference is, seems to be a revision difference. Wait, that am upside down. But uh, I noticed that the processor they sent me with the new one is not as fast as what's in the old one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out the processors after I clean them, clean this up. Oy. There are better ways to clean these I'm using things like uh, Arctix. Oh, I forgot the name of it. But anytime I look for a thermal paste, it's uh, some kind of thermal paste compound remover comes in two bottles. I've never had issues out of the isopropyl alcohol. So it's what I'll always use. Some people say use the microfiber cleaning cloth. Technically, I'm poor. I uh, take care of my parents, and I help my, keep my sister's car running. She's in college, so one of the things I do with the side money is buy components for these computers to try and keep them running. Oh yeah. Oops, a little too big. Oh, uh, so I can keep my YouTube channel running. Yes, I'm still sick. I'm recording video after video. Check the pins on this real quick. Make sure none are damaged. As far as I can tell, these are all good to go. So, uh, so I can pick it up easier. Take out the old one. Normally I would be wearing gloves, which you can see over here, but I decided not to. I asked him what he wants me to do with this processor. See, match the arrow with the arrow. Oy. Working on laptops is almost always going to be the same, depending on the make and model. As a desktop computer, it's got its little lock here, which you use a flat-headed screwdriver for, and uh, has pins. This is an Intel. And it's, uh, from what I know about similar generations to when they started using the, the LGA style chips. And as you can see, they just slot it right in there and we're going to lock it in place. Oy. And there we go. And it's locked and it's nice and in there. One of the main reasons I stopped caring for the PGA type chips, which are pin grid array, is every time I went to do a thermal paste reapplication because thermal paste goes bad or something, it would always rip the CPU out of the socket. And then getting it off the heat sink is a massive pain in the ass. Ugh. People, I like the cold, but I wish it would go away. Good news is, looks like he's getting a brand new board 
only issue I saw was the, uh, let's see, clean this up real quick. Mm -hmm. was that they put a reused processor okay nice and shiny okay we're gonna put the board in now Normally, I would uh, try to get these room cables in, but I'm going to have to pull the keyboard out to get this one back in the board. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get this in here. One thing I do like about this type of Asus laptop, you don't have to fully dismantle it to work on most of the equipment. Well, really any of it. The only time you probably have to fully take it apart is when uh, you need to replace the LCD. And it's in. Go ahead and get the power and stuff back up. In, that's in. Let's see. And these relayed. So I'll get this one over them. Something about plastic, y'all should know about. It does become brittle and crack with age. Just an observation for anyone wondering that do their own computer work or decide to start trying to do their own computer work see, make sure all the holes are lined up everything's in now we're going to go ahead and get the motherboard the motherboard very secured once again I'm using my Vastar screwdriver kit just as good as iFixit's, again, in my opinion. I'd love to have an iFixit toolkit, but I'm broke. Oh, and again, I'm gonna clean the processor one last time before I mount the heatsink assembly for it. That way, uh, I can make sure it's clean because it is open to stuff. I can accidentally touch it and all that. See, there's one here and one here. Away, go away, cold. I don't want you. I'm gonna have fun popping that freaking keyboard back out. I had a hell of a time getting the other one out. Let's see, do I pop? Yeah, it's from the bottom. I pop it out. Now, when you take a part of laptop. A lot of brands seem to like use different size screws for everything. And I can understand the methodology in that. They can't let them slim, they slim line it, do all kinds of things. But, in my opinion, not the best of ideas. Oh, there we go. And I just gotta get these two in. But back to what I was saying. You asked me, uh, something you should use when you use, have different types of screws in a laptop would be a little organizer that it can have a magnetic part or not. But as long as something you have, something that can help you keep organization of where your screws are, will help you not have to hunt where each one has to go. Because then you can organize them by size, and uh, length, and width. Now, this system is a tad bit weird. Oi. 
the way that the hard drive hooks up in this, it uses this plate right here. The uh, hard drive hooks here. And these little itty bitty pins here, there's looks to be about 12 runs both sides of this. From what I remember reading, correct me if I'm wrong, but the SATA hard drives use two of the PCIe lanes to with further speed. And then it has like 15 pins for power. So I'm curious how something that small could run that kind of power. But considering how advanced technology's gotten, I'll just leave it alone and put it back in. There we go. Kevin, I really should have charged more, but considering how much you had to spend to repair this, and I consider you a good friend, I hope you like the deal I got you on all this, on these parts and everything. Okay, go ahead and connect this. And then next we'll put in the Wi-Fi card. Notice how it's tilted on its own. Wait. Just push it down gently and put the screw in. Oh yeah. Come here, little screw. And it always pays to have a magnetic screwdriver. This uh, is a half height car, but it seems to be built with an uh, extension piece on it. Which means it could theoretically be put in a half height uh, PCI, mini PCIe slot. But, eh. Okay, let's see. Next is the screws for this. <coughs> see. Uh, so if y'all don't mind doing something for me, can y'all please, uh, share my channel? Uh, try to get it spread out more. I'm doing the best I can. I have a Twitter, I have a Facebook, I have YouTube. I had an Instagram, but I don't remember the password to it. And, uh... I'm not very good at spreading the word about things beyond uh, what I know. And I know me saying oh, a lot makes me seem like I don't know what I'm doing. Problem is, I'm very shy, but I enjoy doing things like this. Let's see, next is the part for here. Oh, that's something else this uses. A nice little extension. No idea why, but... If you ever salvage these, these can actually come in handy. There we go.
But whenever I got this from Kevin, I completely disassembled every component pretty much, scrubbed it thoroughly clean, keyboard that was in here originally was lost, motherboard's lost, but everything else works. Technically, he could have salvaged all this for more than what he paid to have repaired, but he has several files and games on here that while I could probably have recovered, Hard drive does work, I did check it. I'm going to launch Windows Recovery because of that. I'm having some trouble getting into the BIOS. Wait. So I'm going to lower this a little further. You know what, let's just launch the launch. Yeah, I've been up forever, people. Launch Windows normally. So far, so good. Your fingers crossed. Mainly because they've already spent so much money on this, I don't want to say, well, there's something else wrong. It just won't be fair to them. They've had to spend so far, C30, about $90 for parts. Mouse works. Keyboard works. It's booting up. Looks nice. They take care of their equipment, Kevin and his people. The only issue here is this, and from the looks of this, he had tape over this. This is a webcam. Which would explain those wires I didn't notice for. Kevin, if you want, next time I have this here, if it needs work again, I can disconnect that webcam for you. Uh, Yes, this is about how long it took to boot up with the damaged components. Oh, check later. I know what's wrong with it. Oh, right. I cleaned his mouth pad. So it's not going to be as tracky for a bit. So it's been used for a bit. Let's see. Pull up Windows Task Manager. And go to performance. Says it has a commit of 8 gigabytes. But that normally means it's a mix of uh, page file system and physical memory. Physical memory though says it has 4 gigabytes which is good. Because there are two models of this board from what I saw. One has a single gigabyte built in. The other has a 2 gigabyte built in. Uh, and now that we know it's working, we're going to go ahead and pop the keyboard back in. And there we go. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't pop. Get in there. There we go. Oh wow, it's 7.45 people. Almost time for me to take my uh, heart meds and stuff and get ready for bed. Good news is, his wireless is working perfectly. It's beautiful. Boy, Kevin, as soon as I can figure out where to get all the installers for the games, or I can get a SSD, I suggest you let me reinstall Windows, or if we go the SSD route to clone your hard drive, it would allow your laptop to work a lot faster. Let's see. How long have I? Oh, wow. 
This is gonna be a very long clip. 39 minutes, uh, 30 seconds. See what kind of processor he has in this real quick. But when you see the loading process ring peaking at all. So my guess is that it is slow access time on the hard drive. And as you can see Windows experience isn't grayed out. So that means even though this motherboard might have been a different revision. It seems to be working perfectly fine. This is a Pentium dual core CPU. Pentiums are still pretty good, uh, for the most part. Uh, four gigabyte system RAM. Technically, if I can get him a four gig DIMM in here, uh, for the replaceable stick, he can have a total of six. And I do know that there is an eight gig that I have heard about, but I don't know if it actually exists. It might be just for the actual desktop computers, like servers and stuff. <clears throat> The Atheros, yada yada yada, Ethernet controller is installed. Wireless is working. Laptop's fully functional. Only thing it needs really is uh, a defrag, I would say, and he's done. But I'm going to get off here now. I've been recording this forever. One thing I will do though, try getting the BIOS real quick and show you all the BIOS. Running real cool. Although I am curious to how the hell that fan gets air in it. Seriously, there's no vents. Besides that. Unless it draws it from up top. Oh, it actually might do that. I see vent holes there. Okay. See, yes, this is a different board. Uh, the other one was a two ran uh, Amy BIOS version two fifteen, I think. This one runs at two three point three gigahertz. The one I pulled out. Let's see if I can get you all to see it. Uh, now I'll read it off. Runs at two point twenty gigahertz. Has one meg cache. Uh, eight hundred something. Oh yeah. But it's keeping prop this board's been fully updated from what I see. Uh we're gonna go to the next out because everything's running fine. This car and exit. And then we're just gonna power it off. Because we are done people. He asked me not to screw around with the software, so I'm not going to. And he's a good friend, so I'm not gonna screw anything else over. Uh, gonna wipe that down and then, well, I'm already done, but I'm gonna wipe it down. So, let's see. I apologize for such a long video. Um, unfortunately, this is all data that has been recovered from that damaged micro SD card I have mentioned in several videos. That's why this video is so late. And I'm out of breath because I was running around looking for a better light. Um, a few things to note. The Kevin has not had any more issues on his laptop. I made sure to give him a three-year labor warranty. So if there's any issues, he can ask me and I'll take a look at it. If it's the motherboard or the keyboard that I act up again. That is free labor, which also will include the, well normal maintenance that I would consider being done on a computer such as cleaning out all the dust from the cooling system uh, things like that uh, 
haven't talked to him much at work the past few weeks, mainly because, well, work's been hectic, so there's that. Uh, if you liked today's video, I ask that you please, play, please press like. If you dislike today's video, press dislike. Just please leave a comment in the comment section below the video. Um, oh, I also have a Twitter, at which I will be posting updates to at least a few times a week. So I'll make sure to post a link to that in the description, as well as I will post a link in the description for the Arctic MX-2, the Bass Star Screwdriver Kit. And let's see, is there anything else? Well, you can buy rum and alcohol at any convenience store. Uh, yeah, that's all. That all I can post right now. Uh, I thank you for watching today's video, and this is once again another video from the Tunnels Information Technology Group. And I'll be having apparel soon that will be listed. Uh, next week's video will be about uh, me showing how I apply thermal paste to different types of. CPUs such as Bear Die, I use certain style. IHS, I use another. Uh, I'll see y'all later.